Objectivism really stresses, and I think gets how fundamental free will is, it's that it's incoherent to view yourself as not having free will. And it's incoherent. Most people think of it as, well, without free will, there won't be good and evil. There's not moral choices. You can't fault someone, blame someone, which is also interesting. It's always in the negative. You can't fault them, blame them. You also can't praise them and say they did something good. That's true, but not fundamental from objectivism point of view, because it's deeper. Um, issues about choice first surface or surface um, in a crucial way in regard to the control you have over your mind. And a determinist has to say that you're out of control. You're not in control. Something external to you and antecedent to you is in control, whether it's put nature or nurture, and there's all kinds of variations of what in nature is determining you, or what about your nurture, your physiology, your genetics is determining you. In the religious view, it's God's really in control, not you. So there's a whole strain in religions of determinism. Something else is in control, you're not. If you take that really seriously, it means you're not in control of your mind or of your thinking. Yeah. Um, and if that's true, then what you're talking about, you have no control over. Why do you think you're right and somebody else is wrong? You're determined to think and say what you're saying. He's determined to think and say what he's saying. Why do you have a perspective that you're right, he's wrong? Haven't you ever been wrong before? Haven't there ever been cases where someone else is right? You're wrong. so, and you're you're fundamentally out of control. So it's I believe what I believe because of, and I don't, and so and someone like because uh, there there are most people today are determined. Most people in science are determinants. Most people are even arguing about morality. Most people are determinants. So take someone like Sam Harris, who on on many moral issues is good, on issues about Islam and religion is good. But he has a view that free will, there's no such thing. There's not even the illusion of free will is, is his view. And here's one way he put it. So here's, uh, I've read his book on free will. Here's one excerpt. So he gives that supposedly you select among alternatives, but you don't really. You are struggling to save money, but you're also tempted to buy a new computer. Where is the freedom when one of these opposing desires inexplicably yeah. triumphs over its rivals? And he has to say it's inexplicable because yeah. if, if they're really scientific, they have to say, I don't know what determines people. We can't tell. I can't tell you what somebody's going to do. I can't even like, come close to telling what someone's going to do. But I know he's determined. I don't know what he's determined by. If it's because his mother breastfed him or didn't breastfeed him or what. I mean, what combination of things results in his action now? So it's inexplicable. Now, that's how Harris describes actions. He would never describe his thinking like that. It's um, I'm trying to decide, should I be religious or should I be secular? Where is the freedom when one of these it's ideas is inexplicable? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's so, so what, what objectivism says is, if there was no such thing as free will, there's no such thing as knowledge, there's no such thing as anybody having a perspective of, I'm have arrived at the truth, you've made an error, you need to correct, which means you need to make choices. You're in control of your mind. Make choices to come to see, oh, yeah, that's a wrong view. This is the right view. If you don't have that control, the distinction of truth and falsehood goes away, and all knowledge goes away, including knowledge that determinism is true. So it's in itself refuting, it's incoherent in a deep way, objectively. At the conceptual level, if you don't have control over your mind such that you can say, I'm orienting it towards reality. I'm pursuing the truth, and therefore I can trust my conclusions because I know that that's what I'm doing. Yeah. If you don't have that power, then you don't have any perspective on your own mind that I can rely on it, that I should view the conclusions I've reached as true because I put in the effort to reach the truth. If that's all just happens, um, you, the, you, you're completely out of control. And notice, like Harris is trying to, to, to use him as a, a little bit of a punching bag. He's trying to persuade people 
what are you doing when you're trying to persuade yeah, people? No, I never understood that. Yeah, I mean, you're not trying to find some antecedent factor out there. If I, if I just arrange his room in such a way, he'll come to agree with me because the lights are a little different. So if you thought that, you would be like the nudge people. That or we're going to construct your environment such that we're going to push you towards the right. Um, and I mean, all over in today's culture, people are determined. So there are people who think that, yeah. that that's how people reach their conclusions. If I just restructure their environment in a certain way, I can manipulate them. But Harris doesn't think that. Yeah. He's trying to actually persuade people. And that means they have control over their mind and they can think about it and say, yeah, you're absolutely right about this. Um, and it's not determined by antecedent facts.